Good morning. In this session, we are going to discuss about the methods for prevention of corrosion. At the end of this session, student will be able to explain the methods for prevention of the corrosion of the metal. Methods for pre uh, prevention of corrosion, first cathodic protection and the second one anodic protection. Cathodic protection. The principle behind this cathodic protection is that the metal is forced to behave like a cathode. We know for corrosion to occur, there should be anode and cathode. Anode undergoes oxidation, that is it gets lost, that process is called as we can say corrosion. In this particular case, since there will be no any anodic area, the corrosion of the metal does not take place. There are two ways of cathodic protections. First by using galvanic or sacrificial anode that is galvanic protection and the second one by using impressed current called as impressed current cathodic protection. First by using galvanic or sacrificial anode that is galvanic protection. This can be explained with the help of this particular diagram. Suppose this is a ship, a hull of ship. As we know, ships, these are available in ocean water. That means all the suitable conditions are available for corrosion. This metallic material is always in contact with sea water, which is full with minerals. And at the same time, it is humid in nature and temperature is also somewhat, we can say, favorable. Under such a circumstances, this corrosion undergoes very quickly and it forms a corrosion products. So this ship can be protected by means of a galvanic or sacrificial anode method. In this particular case, the metallic structure which is to be protected is connected by wire to more anodic, that is more active metal like magnesium, zinc, aluminum and their alloys, etc. The more active metal used for this purpose is known as a sacrificial anode. This undergoes sacrificial anodic proce process and it gets lost. The original metallic structure now behaves as a cathode and therefore it gets protected. Use. This method is used for protection of buried pipelines, water tanks, undergoing underwater cables, ship, ship hulls, etc. Second, impressed or external current method. This is the diagram which explains the impressed current method. This is suppose a pipeline which is buried which is to be protected. This is covered by means of the soil, water, etc. All the favorable conditions are available for corrosion. This we have to protect by means of impressed current method. For this purpose, this pipeline is connected to the source of current. Through this source of current, the electrons are passed through the pipeline. An impressed current is applied in the opposite direction to the counterbalance to counterbalance or nullify the corrosion current. The corroding metallic surface is thus converted under the situation from anode to cathode and thus gets protected. Impressed current source that is a, a battery or rectifier using an insoluble anode such as platinum, graphite, stainless steel, etc. Use for the protection of box water cooler, water tanks, underground oil or water pipelines, transmission lines, towers, etc. Limitations of this cathodic protection. Capital investment and maintenance cost is very high. 
increase the corrosion of adjacent pipelines or some metallic structure in the vicinity due to currents. It produces blisters on the protected metal itself and problems associated with hydrogen evolution or formation and accumulation of hydroxide ions. At this juncture, pause the video and answer this question. The question is, the metal used for the protection of buried pipelines, water tanks, underground cable, ship hulls, etc. is A. Platinum B. Calcium C. Zinc and D. Silver Welcome back. The answer for this question is zinc. Anodic protection. A metal is passivated by applying current in a direction that will render the metal more anodic. Protection is based on the formation of a protective film on metals by externally applied anodic current. Anodic protection, it is carried out by two different mechanisms. The first one is potentiostat and the second one is anodizing. First, potentiostat. This is the diagram to explain this process. This is a potentiostat, an instrument. This is a metal which is to be protected, a tank which is to be protected. The connections are made as the metal structure which is to be protected is connected to the this particular terminal of potential stat. The reference electrode is also connected in this particular structure and it is also provided with auxiliary electrode. In between first and second terminals a voltmeter is adjusted and the third terminal it is provided with ammeter to measure the electric current. Potential stat is an electronic device which maintains a metallic surface to be protected at a constant potential with respect to a reference electrode. The main conditions for this it is a potential range over which the metal is passive should be wider that is a range of about 50 MP. The current density required to start the protection should be as low as possible. Lower the passive current needed for the maintaining the protection lesser will be the operating cost of the device. Advantages First, it has low operating cost, it is applicable to wide range of corrodents. Third, it has ability to protect complex structures. Fourth, few auxiliary electrodes are necessary. Fifth, feasibility of the process can be predicted in the laboratory by simulation process. And sixth one, protection current gives an indication of corrosion. Limitations of this potential step. First, it is suitable for metal corrodent systems which show active passive behavior. And the second one, if the system goes out of control, then there is a risk of a high corrosion rate also. Second, anodizing. Metals like aluminum, titanium, etc., and their alloys forms a thin oxide film on their surface when exposed to air. The oxide film is non-porous, adhesive, and uniform in nature, thereby providing better corrosion resistance to the base metal. However, the thickness of naturally formed oxide layer is very small 
and it does not protect the base metal properly that's why in case of this anodizing we are increasing the size of deposition of oxide layer and we can increase the protection level to overcome this particular problem the thickness of existing oxide film is increased by electrolysis process the anodized layer that is oxide oxide layer also improves hardness wear resistance and electrical insulation also in an anodizing process a component to be protected is connected as anode in electro electrolytic cell containing strong electrolyte such as concentrated sulfuric acid a small amount of current is passed which oxidizes the anode the thickness of the oxide film is controlled by the current and time the oxide layer formed is porous in nature which is then sealed by immersing the article in a bath of oil wax dye or boiling water etc references for this i have used a textbook of engineering chemistry by jain and jain thank you